Hey everyone, welcome back to Static Pharmacology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you a patient care scenario, and your goal is to develop a treatment plan based solely on pharmacological management. For an extra challenge, I'll be putting a one minute timer on the bottom of the screen. When the time is up, we'll do a scenario walkthrough, and then I'll explain my treatment. Enjoy the card, and good luck. Three, two, one. Well, I hope you have some ideas about a medication treatment plan for this patient. Let's go ahead and now dive into the scenario. So you're dispatched to a private residence for a 20-year-old male complaining of abdominal cramping and vomiting. He is alert and oriented and reports more than 10 episodes of vomiting over the last four hours. He reports that he smokes marijuana regularly, but denies any trauma, past medical history, or alcohol use. He states that he has vomited anything that he has tried to eat or drink, but felt a little bit better when he took a hot shower earlier. He denies seeing any blood in his vomit and denies diarrhea or fevers. Physical assessment reveals no acute findings and his abdomen is soft and non-tender. You obtain the following vital signs. Blood pressure 122 over 70, heart rate 126, respiratory rate 24, SpO2 98% on room air, and a blood sugar of 108. The case I've presented for you today is actually more complicated than a simple nausea and vomiting call. This patient is actually suffering from a cyclical vomiting syndrome, and more likely than not, this is a cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome, which is characterized by prolonged periods of nausea and vomiting and abdominal cramping, secondary to frequent, um, sometimes daily marijuana use. Now, the mechanisms for cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome are unknown. And even more strange is the relief that sufferers claim to get by taking hot showers. Again, we still don't really know why hot showers seem to alleviate, at least temporarily, the symptoms for some of these patients. Treatment here is going to be largely supportive. And remember, the treatment I'm giving you is not all-inclusive. This is just a treatment list that you may or may not run into pre-hospitally or even in the emergency department. Let's take a look at that now. Now, just be aware, the list that you're seeing in front of you here, these are options. You don't have to use all of these in treatment, but I have personally found that these medications are the most effective when managing cyclical vomiting syndromes, particularly cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. But I digress, just like all my static cards, I'll begin treatment by regurgitating the mantra, scene safe, BSI, IV O2 monitor. I'll then want to perform a 12 lead. And this is because a lot of these medications will actually cause QT prolongation, especially in individuals who are already prone to that. So we need to get a baseline uh, 12 lead ECG. I'll then go ahead and start with the tried and true Ondansetron or Zofran, and this will be given IV in four milligram doses. I'll then move on to promethazine. If needed, promethazine is a phenothiazine, acts a little bit differently. I'll give 6.25 to 25 milligrams, either IV slowly or IM. Now it should be noted that promethazine is very caustic to tissue, so if your IV infiltrates, you actually risk tissue necrosis. So just be aware of that, and a lot of the times, the safest way to give promethazine is deep IM, just to prevent this tissue necrosis from occurring. I'll then move on to metoclopramide, otherwise known as Reglan. Metoclopramide is known as a prokinetic drug, or a dopamine antagonist, so this will actually promote gastric emptying. 
The dose here is going to be 10 milligrams IV given over about 10 minutes. So the safest way to administer this is in a mini bag, like a 50 ml bag. Because of the extra pyramidal side effects associated with metoclopramide and these other dopamine antagonist medications, usually we give Benadryl or diphenhydramine concurrently. So we'll administer diphenhydramine 25 to 50 milligrams IV. We could then consider administering a benzodiazepine such as lorazepam in a low 0.5 to 1 milligram dose. If this fails, we'll move on to haloperidol, otherwise known as Haldol, and this is an antipsychotic medication, but it has good uses for post-operative nausea and vomiting, as well as cyclical vomiting syndromes. Now you can give haloperidol IV or IM, however, super duper important, haloperidol is packaged in two different formulations, haloperidol lactate, and then haloperidol decanoate. It's very important that you realize that you can only administer one of these formulations through the IV. And that formulation that's safe for IV use is haloperidol lactate. Beyond this medication, uh, another older prokinetic drug, which is gaining a steady comeback here, is droperidol, otherwise known as anapsine. And droperidol is given in very, very small doses, 0.625 to 1.25 milligrams Again, given over 10 minutes, so put into a mini bag and run slowly. You'll then administer boluses of IV fluid for hydration. And then as a bonus treatment, if you have it, there's a couple of studies that actually are showing some relief of these symptoms when you apply capsaicin topically to the abdomen. Capsaicin is the active ingredient in things like hot peppers. The science is still murky as to why some studies are showing that the transient receptor potential vanilloid 1 receptor site that is located in various spots in the body has something to do with the regulation of vomiting, especially in these cases, and capsaicin will actually agonize it. So again, jury's still out on that, but it's one more thing you can throw at this patient if everything else has failed. And then of course, last but not least, rapid transport. And that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel for more. Until I see you next, keep washing your hands and have a good rest of your night.